So we want to do behind the scenes, we want to show like what it was. PR101, if you get a sponsorship, you throw it in there. Because they're there Melbourne. You don't want Melbourne here mad at you. So this... So I knew with public school, this was their relaunch. It was kind of all on the line. These guys did not have big investors. You know what I mean? They are, they are just two New York guys who had to make it. So for um, I knew that when we relaunched it, it had to be huge. We had to have as many access points, publicity points, marketing tools that we could on a very low budget, right? Because we, they were new. So we had, obviously, we, New York Fashion Week. We teamed up with Milk Studios, which is a really well-known, it's like a cool, like they always have a great, um, collection of designers there, and this was the first year where they did a menswear night. So it was six menswear shows in the same kind of hour, because, you know, these presentations, you walk in, you walk out. As an editor, I had 20 to go to a day. You know? Every season, I go Paris, London, New York, and by the end of it, I probably see about 150 shows, you know, so you've got to make that mark. And it sounds, it's great, like, you know, I'm not, it's the best life, I love doing it, but after 15 shows, one day, you're like, what happened? You know, so, uh, <laughs> So it's great, but um, so I'm like, it has, we have to have it stick. So we got Tyson in there. We had some of the New York Knicks come. And we got um, Aesop to come, and all these like, great guys, and as you'll see it, but we also had the video to, to blast out. We had the images to blast out. We had the Richard Haynes invite that I told you about, which was a real cool factor when it came to New York Times, New York Magazine, those kind of publications, because he's kind of like a god, because he's been the illustrator for New York Times for years and years. So, we had the CFDA backing, so with this relaunch, it just took us from here, you know, from here to here, and it, everything that else followed is a great, great example of how you can, do not have to be the Burberry. You don't have, you can be a non-advertising company to make it. So, through the lineage, I'll just tell you now really quickly, public school in the last three years, um, we just won Menswear Designer of the Year from the CFDA, which is kind of winning the Fashion Oscar. The year before, they got that's emerging, so that was perfect. They just launched a J. Crew women's collaboration, collaboration that sold out in three days. Uh, this fall season, uh, so they showed February New York. They did a runway show that showed men's and women's. Uh, and last night we had Jennifer Lawrence wear our suit to the Hunger Games uh, premiere, which is like the biggest celebrity endorsement you could ask for. Right? The thing I'm like, oh, that's awesome, great job, guys. And they're so modest. They're like, that's a good thing, right? I'm like, yeah, that's a real. Than given, you know. So, um, so that's just an example, and they keep going and going. And as they are a great one from a PR perspective to understand that press though doesn't always lead to sales, right? So because they had so much press in the beginning, but they still didn't have their consumer base. Like I was saying, they didn't. So we adapted to like their CFDA. They were going to bring a young like model, and I made them bring. They're, the date's a big thing, and a wind tour like tells you, like gives advice and all that. I made them bring James Murphy, the lead singer of the LCD sound system, because music's such a huge thing for them. And that alone made their sales go up because it went to a new men's genre was before they launched women's, right? So you have to always have your customer base, and you have to, as a designer, never lose your aesthetic. And from a brand and media director, you have to guide them. Because if there's no sales, there's nothing. You can be on the cover of New York Times, but if you can't have a good sell through at Barney's or Bergdorf or wherever it is, they will drop you because they 
have, you know, everybody's in a business. It's a multi-billion dollar business, but it is uh, growing so fast. And like design and all that, because even if you're innovative, even if, no matter how innovative and unique you are, you're always on the same calendar. So you have to be innovative, but make it stick and, make, and know your customer base. So I'm gonna show you one more video from them, and this is the latest, or this was from a, a season ago. Um, and I'll just show you, just because this was, this was on GQ, and uh, you'll just be able to see the difference of the people and who come to the show. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of big celebrity. It was great. It was awesome. So this was last fall season. I'm going to set it all up. Videos are like the coolest part. Mm -hmm. Alright, we might have to lose that. A minute, so I will go back to my slide. So that's just a little bit about like the branding and marketing of public schools. So now they're on the rise, they're doing great work, um, they're continuing, they're going to, their next step is to become more international, right? So from like their press is down, they're with them huge, um, they have new agencies coming, their team has expanded, now they're mentor of the year, now it's like how do I get even more into the Japan market? How do I get even more into South America, like London? And that will be the, our next step as a collective, how we're going to go outreach that. We'll always show in New York City because they're made in New York. You know what I mean? That's what they have been great on. But um, that's what we'll tackle next, and which is really exciting for me. So we're paying trips to Japan. We're paying like things store visits, which is huge because that's where you can really get the customer base. And as a media director, something that's really important to <coughs> advise brands on, on a side note, is to go into the stores you're in and talk to the sales associates, right? So you, we do seminars where we go into Barney's or we'll go into a smaller store, Macy's, wherever you're carried, and you go in with your retailers and like the people who are working the floor. Because they, you know, you want to meet the public store guys. You, you, know, you, you know their brand, but I always have them before every season go in at least twice and talk about the leather interior. Tell, make sure they know it's made in New York. That's how you're going to, when you're against the Tom Fords, when you're against the people like everybody knows about those name brands, that's how those sales associates are going to remember you and take it to the consumer, and that's how your sales are happening. So that's something really to know about, and like for a branding strategy that a lot of, that I've seen media directors do not advise on, and it always works. And it's everything from the big department stores to a great, you know, Right, one-off brick and mortar in LA or Miami or Richmond, wherever you're sold and you know your customer base would be big right there. Um, my next client I want to talk about is my Colombian princess so, so much. Her name is Karen Gallo. She's up in the top left. Um, she is brand new. So this is our first season that we're in store, right? So this is a designer who is an accessories designer. Footwear, handbags, all made in now Karen has an eye, a wicked eye. She has a taste, there's a, like a muted palette about her, and there's a cool factor. However, I came in because the business side, she's a creative. She likes sparkle, you know what I mean? She's a designer, and that's what you, if you go into fashion and lifestyle, you will see that more and more, where you're like, we do not have the $30,000 to make sure we, you know what I mean? To like build marble scaffolding. Why don't we do it with little white, because we're gonna take them all down anyways, you know what I mean? So you have to see that in the business to expand. So I show her because you see, so this was just from our last season. This will be from spring. Uh, her inspiration was the Royal Tenenbaums by Wes Anderson, but she wanted an Asian streetwear influence. So. We made custom-made kimonos on a budget, you know, and it was a great, great success for a show. Um, the thing is with her, so, you know, she thought every designer thinks their stuff is the best, right? It's your baby, it's who you've been working on and everything. So, and every single designer thinks they're gonna go in and they're gonna be in for the first season. No problem, you know, 
happens. Nothing's better. It never happens. It, like, I never in that I know happened. So like her first season, it was very, from a sales perspective, was a very, um, not lackluster, it was expected, you know, from, from our standpoint, from a business standpoint, but not from the designer. So I came in there and I went from a press, press break. I'll, I'll show you the placements and everything. I was getting press like crazy. But I was like, how am I going to still be able to let the consumers buy this? So I did some major research, and I researched um, online that, that are kind of outside the box, but can still give someone a great way to purchase and buy and get to know. Because the product is amazing, made in the, you know what I mean, like the leather is cool. So the sneaker is awesome. So I researched and I look, started looking at e-commerce platforms that could give the brand recognition and um, also obviously give a sales point. So one of them is Shop Spring, and it's a great, from a digital standpoint, a great application that just launched that uh, it's great to research. It has it launched three months ago, or yeah, July I think it launched, and it is backed by LVMH, which is a huge fashion organization that owns the best with Gucci and the big houses. It's uh, the Tisch family, which is a major art New York family invested, and it is an app, the first, I think, app that you can go on and you can purchase, and they have a range of brands, and some of the best in the world, and like, you know, but it also has a social media factor of it, so you get to know the brand, it gives you direct links. And for emerging brands like this, it's a great way to sit next to the Alexander Wangs, and sit next to the Philip Lens, because you have the same kind of aesthetic, but like, they're gonna, they're gonna click on yours as well, because what she does have going for her is a creative, cool as the aspect of her, you know? It's great eyes and everything, and it catches your attention. So for Karen, that's where we're at right now. So I've been doing, I've been taking on a real brand direction from her, where I went to Paris and I did wholesale for her, which is, we did Premier Class, this huge trade show, and um, some of the best brands in the world, like, who are emerging, sit in there, and that's when, the, you know, the stores in Amsterdam, the stores all around the world will come in, and it's a great thing where they will purchase and look at the collection and buy. Um, and a lot of, another thing, I, if you go into this, a great opportunity is to get to know the wholesale side, the buying side. I worked in PR media agencies for years, and they had no clue. They didn't even care about it. They just knew they wanted to get on the New York Times, and that's it. That's not how you approach when it comes to being a brand director. So from a wholesale standpoint, you want to know the stores they should be in. What you know, she has a huge Japan, Japan market, but like I knew that I only wanted to sell to this one in Tokyo and this one over here because I knew they're competitors. But I knew the sell through the emerging brands, they're going to buy more and show a real cohesive look of her collection. It's not just going to be one style because you want them to have at least four styles of the season, like with the little thing, so people can go look at it and know that's who Karen Gallagher is. You know. So that's what I do from a branding marketing strategy for her, and it's becoming up and up. And um, she's great. It's going to be. It's interesting. She, music's a huge influence on her as well. She's uh, born in Colombia, raised in Queens. She's a creative director of restaurants as well. So she, that's an angle and pitch that I'll go into later. Like you always have to look for them as a whole, not just as a footwear designer. But how can we have different angles to give you seasonal publicity and awareness? And that's what we'll go into. Um, another client of mine is Raleigh Denim Workshop, and uh, Raleigh I've been working with for years and years. They are um, an American brand, everything made in America, down in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, I don't know, it's a great denim brand. They launched in 2007. Uh, they started, they're, that's them right there, they're a married couple, Victor and Sarah. They literally cut about 60 pairs of jeans, hopped in their van, and drove up to Barney's New York, showed them what they could do, and Barney's ordered it first just ordered it from them and they had three rebuys the same season and put them on the map. So from 2007 to 2000 now, uh, 15, about eight years later, um, they've cut, they are the slow and steady wins the race and that's why I love working with them. They started with dinner and they got like, you know, it's now probably like an eight million dollar company, which is great, but now uh, off the record, we are, we just secured a huge Kate Spades collaboration where Sarah's going to be the of it. So this is the brand I'm like, okay, maybe I'll go in-house for it. You know what I mean? Like, it's taking off. It's taking off because their quality of product has never ceased. They do all their production in-house. They are great to talk to. They are, you know, they just, they're, you know, rally kids who are making it happen. They have expanded to ready wear at the perfect time. Um, and that's all the stuff that we advise on. You know, 
we have calls every single week, if not twice a week, where I go, what do you want to do with that? I think it's too soon. We were going to do a pop-up at our Basel in Miami this year, and I said, hold off on it. Like, I like a free trip to Miami, but I was like, you'll get, it's not right, we don't have enough time, and you'll get lost in the shuffle, you know? So, that's something we've been going with, and it, they're just going up and up. So, you're going to see a lot more of them the next year, through the Kate Spade collaboration, through um, a few others that I have to have off the record, but I'll make sure. When the time's right. You'll read about it. Uh, yeah, so, um, and all of this stuff, and I couldn't be happy with better people. And again, they are a brand that understands that, again, so and steady kind of wins, so they breaks. They, their collaborations aren't that apparent. You know, they do it with, they're doing collaborations with Bernhardt Design Furniture, Fabric, that now that's going to be all the design shows, not just that. You know what I mean? So, everybody who reads the dwells and wallpapers and not the Vogue's will know about them as well. And that's really, really smart of them and us to create these things that builds their consumer awareness. And as we've done it, it's grown and grown. Um, oh, we're here. Uh, last, okay, so this is Dolly. Um, this is, um, so I decided, you know, after coming home from Paris, and had, so, so September and October, a little bit about calendar. August through October and January through March are like my busy months where there is no, there is, you know, that's when we're traveling the world, we're getting stuff done, it's great, we're, you're working 80 hours a week, but, you know, the summer you kind of get to relax, you know, so it is a give and take. So I, of course, decided why not finish up Paris and an LA market and three days later open a restaurant. So that's what I did uh, uh, about three weeks ago. And this is Gal Gali. And Gali is um, the chef Stephen Gallo. Uh, he is Karen Gallo's, my other client's uh, partner. Uh, yeah, we'll see. You know, personal level. I, I, was, a little, I was Olivia Pope's scandal for a month. It was pretty crazy. Um, but uh, in the New York industry. But uh, so Chef Stephen Gallo um, is from Long Island. He comes from a major, they own like 18 restaurants, very like Long Island, Gino's, Italiano. Uh, but he wanted to separate, because his family did not want him to come to Manhattan, and he did it. And he opened Gali in Soho, which is um, the neighborhood I am in, and it was a big success. The art, fashion industry, it's Italian comfort food, great restaurant in a really competitive market. Like Man Manhattan is so hard to see restaurants, clubs, everything fall in like three months. You're like, where's the next one? So, he has had two years of huge success, and this fall, they took over a great place in the Lower East Side, because the Lower East Side, just for the record, is totally rising, the cool stuff is happening, it's not as bright anymore, kind of bums me out, but there's good stuff. But, um, so the Lower East Side of New York, and they took this corner spot um, that used to be an established in a tech of this great wine place that left, and he opened this restaurant, and they came to me because they realized Gali is not just a restaurant anymore, it's a brand. He's going to bring, be bringing out a cookbook later that's on his mom's recipes, you know. And the great thing about Stephen Gallo, he doesn't want to be a celebrity chef. Like, he's not out there trying to, he's on the floor every day making sure, like, the food is correct and, like, the customer service is perfect and that's why they become a success. It's not a $100 ticket, but you can get an awesome lunch pasta for $12. Like, you know what I mean? Great wine, everything. That's really, they want the people to feel like they're home, you know, when they come in the store. So, with this launch that I just did, I knew that we could get those placements, the new places to eat, New York Mag again, or Wall Street Journal and all that, but that's not where we were going. Like, I met, so I threw a huge media night, an influencer night, where it was just like, prep before, it was cool, we had hors d'oeuvres, it was like the great food and wine editors, also fashion people. Um, who came? Um, everyone came. Uh, Jay-Z stopped by for a second, which was awesome, with the public school guys, like, um, the, the cast of girls, a few of them came. It was just like, sure, come on in. You know what I mean? So it was a great time for that to happen, but it was building his brand. He stays in the corner. I made him come out and like introduce himself. I made him people know that he he is the Gali brand, and where, and that's where I'm taking it. So I held off on giving the placements because he's having a huge feature come out, even though it's already open in two weeks in the New York Times about him. You know, because it it takes a while to get these placements, especially these features, which we'll talk about. I have him in the next print of Man of the World showing what an entrepreneur he is. Because that will give him the next level when it comes to the, look, the cookbook watch. He wants to do 
um, Dolly to go in like every street corner of Manhattan. So all of this will build for where he is going. Um, and as a brand and media director, I had to sit him down and realize he's not just a restaurant owner. Like, you know, with these plans that you want to do, you're going to pay me to take you to the next level and it's working out great. Your restaurants, also with this location, it's always busy, foot traffic. You know, you're going to have people coming in. So it's not about trying to get the publicity to, get, to make you money. It's where you're going to go in the longevity. So that's my new project. It's a great place that you guys, next time you're in New York, check out. Um, uh, so those are the clients that um, I'm really having success with currently, a selection of them. Um, this next one, this next one is The Cools, which is a media marketplace that's similar to Spring. Um, I was the media director. This is kind of, this is the example of when no one to hold them, no one uh, for me, I had a great time with them. Uh, I came in as a media director. It's an online marketplace that I will show you a film for right now. Can you give me a little hint? That I came in for during a uh, switch, a change, where they were almost like an Etsy at the beginning of their launch, and then they had a brand director come in and wanted to be more luxury marketplace where people could do it via social media, all that. So they brought me in to get that message out in a tactful way, because they didn't want to be like, the, this isn't really working, so we're going to go this way. So that's how I had to create it. Um, so I had to bring in good marketing strategies um, to give that, that awareness with this launch and give that publicity. So one of the things I did is make this uh, big film that got on the Huffington Post and all of this stuff. Uh, and it still gave a little bit of mystery for it all. Good. And this, so this came out about a week before we did the relaunch, um, which I'll talk about the dinner series in a sec, and it got the buzz going. Can you hear I'm going to stop it um, So this was a launch, uh, this was a launch, again, right before we did. We got buzzed because we had like Dream Hemingway in it. We had Stephen Rojas. I was like, what are we doing? You know, what is this? What is happening with this? And then we launched with a relaunch, I should say, with a dinner series. Because they, Olivier Van Temps is the CEO of the pools, and he's this crazy Frenchman who's made millions like everything from Burning Man to, yeah. So anyway, so ben, he wanted to throw a big part, but I'm like, still, nobody's going to know what you, who you are. So instead, I decided to do a six-part dinner series at this great place um, in, the, in the very Lower East Side, in this private room called Fat Radish, in this private room where I had 12 to 14 influencers every night. So they have fashion brands, they have lifestyle brands, so I did design editors. I did fashion editors. We, we made these aprons. Like, so right there, that's Olivia Van Tinch and uh, Giovanna Battaglia, which is the GQ, or GQ 
Vogue, like fashion director. She was like has millions of followers. Like, she was a huge kid. Um, Aaron Featherston came with her uh, boyfriend who's in Cobra Starship. Like it was great. That's one. That's the Rockdale family. Um, very New York scene. But that was the power of social media, right? So I had them go like at the cool dinner. That picture right there with Giovanna Battaglia. That gave us more traffic than the the Esquire. The Forbes feature everything that one picture from her that boosted our uh, web traffic by like ninety eight percent the next day. There was like hundreds of thousands of people just because she had that like, story. Everybody wanted to come. So that being said, though, that wouldn't have happened. I don't think at a huge crazy party, right? People would have been talking about because it wasn't like pools party. I'm wasted. You know what I mean? It was like the social media platform that does marketplace plus digital. Oh my God, my brand's on it. We're so excited, and that kind of gave them. And coming from that. I had non-stop media public. Like again, I had a Forbes eight-page feature on it on the CEO. I had Esquire, Vogue Italia, uh, AOL Stylist, Huffington Post, you name it. We talked about it. Our stuff increased. The brand, as it switched over, was going really, really well. I also made sure our CEO Olivier and myself were on every single panel possible. So the Text and Tastemaker Summit that I coordinated, I did a CEO panel with some of the best CEOs. Of course, I put them on it. You know. We did stuff like that. I made us make sure we had great campaigns on the website. Just roll with it. Constant content, great imagery that doesn't have to be product at first, but it's going to lead you to it in an ongoing. We found out that Pinterest is giving us 40% of our traffic, which and I they had that the entire time, and nobody seemed to care about that. I'm like, that's 40% of your entire traffic. So we hired a social media marketing person who basically was our Pinterest girl for like the whole time because it was so 